that transporter got the job. Okay, and that was your question earlier. Somebody came up to me and asked me, why wouldn't you grade it? I don't know where you are right now. He asked, he asked the question, why wouldn't you grade it? Well, here's a reason right here. Other stuff doesn't work inside the cell if gradients do not exist. And we'll talk about a bunch of other stuff in the next few semesters where a sodium gradient is necessary. Are we good? No secondary active transport. It's still an active transport mechanism. Why? Because we're moving some molecule up a gradient. Even though one of them is moving down, it doesn't matter. Something is moving up. So by definition, that's what trumps. Okay? The movement of the molecule up the gradient trumps the passive movement. Okay, the, the passive movement is the means by which the transporter works, but it's not its main job. Its main job is to move the molecule up the gradient. All right? Good? Yes? Okay. What time we got? Oh, good. We're good. We got here at 6, right? Okay, we're good. Oh, and by the way, saturation, same thing. Saturation still holds true. We talk about saturated transporter. These transporters can be saturated just like facilitated uh, transporters can be saturated. These are, they have to grab and throw, grab and throw, grab and throw. All transporters do. Regardless of what transporters we're talking about. All right? And, and are we completely okay with moving up and down gradients? Why do we need energy? Are we, I mean, are we good with it? Most of you? I mean, sometimes I see confused faces. I give you a really simple, you know what, let me just do this really quick. That's a mountain. That's a car. Good job. That's not made in Detroit, that's for sure. <laughs> that's a car. This is the top of the mountain. This is the bottom of the mountain. If I want this car to go down the mountain, do I need to turn it on? Can I just put it in neutral? Do I need to use gasoline to get this car down the mountain? No. I can put it in neutral and I can just push it and that car is just going to go right down that mountain and I'm not going to use a bit of gasoline. I'm not going to use a bit of fuel. I'm not going to use a bit of energy to get that car down the mountain. Now if I had a car here, however, I drew a limousine here. <laughs> right. uh, well, what's that one the car that has a trunk in it? Uh, El Camino. Sorry, what's it called? El Camino. El Camino. Yes, I should know that. I watch County Cars on uh, TV. So we have an El Camino here. Not that it matters what kind of car it is, but if I want to move the car up the hill, can I push it? Do I need to start it? Do I need a fuel? Do I need combustion? Do I need the spark plugs to fire? I need a fuel source to move the car up the hill, just like you need fuel to move molecules up gradient, just like you don't need a fuel, ATP, to move molecules down gradients. Okay? So if there's any confusion, hopefully this straightened out. If it didn't, then I'm seeing you. Maybe I'll draw a better picture and say something better. Um, but anyway, that's what that's all about. Upgrading energy, downgrading, no energy, no need. Okay? All right. Now, moving forward and talking about other transport mechanisms that are active. Endocytosis are these three right here. If you see the word endocytosis, we're talking about one of those three things. And when you endocytose something, it's going from outside the cell to inside the cell. But now we are no longer talking about transporters. So transporters, that was facilitated diffusion, that was primary active transport, that was secondary active transport, although next semester I'm gonna surprise you to tell you that actually the movement of water technically is facilitated diffusion. There are, there are water channels. They were discovered not too long ago, the first one discovered in one of the Nobel Prize. But right now we're just gonna say osmosis and we're gonna separate it. All right, so actually just strike that from the record. I, didn't, I just didn't mean to say that. Those three are what we're going to be talking about now. All right? And so there's a picture on pilot. There's a picture up on the screen that shows all three. Phagocytosis, phenocytosis, receptor-mediated endocytosis. I'm pretty sure to see we talked about the first two. I'll talk a little bit more about 
but not too much more than what she did. But we'll draw at least this one, for sure this one. I know she didn't talk about this. At least I don't think she did. Let's talk about phagocytosis. Now, not all cells can do this, and actually very few cells can do this. There's only a handful of cells that can phagocytize something in the body. When we are phagocytizing something in the body, we're, we're, we're ingesting it because it doesn't belong. It can be pieces of dead cells. It could be bacteria that needs to be rid of from the body. It's debris, it's pathogens that these cells are designed to eat. Why? Because they don't belong there. It's one of the ways your immune system fights infection. It's one of the ways you get rid of all the cells that are, not, that are dying in your body. By the way, you, you, four million red blood cells are destroyed every, every second. So the time it took me to say that, we all destroyed about 10 million red blood cells. Ten, not 10, 10 million, every, or four million every second. They cannot stick around. We need to get rid of them. And that's what's gonna happen to them. We're gonna get phagocytized. So what happens here is, is that we have a phagocyte. Macrophages are, are uh, you know, kind of Pac-Man cells of the, of the body. And so it wants that. I'm just gonna call it a particle. Again, that could be the membrane of a red blood cell that just died. That can be bacteria. It doesn't matter what it is, but it's something that we need to get rid of. And so what the phagocyte is going to do, it's literally going to engulf it with its plasma membrane. And so it folds over it. Now I draw a lot, but I'm a crappy drawer. I don't even know what the hell that is. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Something that fell out of the back of the El Camino and broke apart on the road. <laughs> is starting to get engulfed. Now, do you think that's easy for that cell to do? What do you think it needs to do? It needs ATP. This is an ATP fast process. And so ATP is needed to fold that membrane, and eventually what's gonna happen is it's gonna completely fold around that particle, whatever that particle is. And then it's gonna pinch off. And when it pinches off, what's going to be inside of that cell. It just ate it. Now what's going to happen to it? Well, there's some enzymes that get released. You don't have to know that. That'll just destroy it, whether it's bacteria or other stuff. And we'll actually talk about this process in some detail later on. Next semester, we'll be talking about the destruction of red blood cells in a ton of detail. All right? But that's phagocytosis. We are trying to get rid of something that doesn't belong. That's different than pinocytosis. Pinocyte, so that's considered cell eating. This is considered pinocytosis cell drinking. We are not drinking something to get rid of it. We're drinking it. When I say we, I mean our cells are drinking because they want it for a purpose. So let's say that this, whatever it is, we won't draw this one because this is good enough. This right here, this cell wants that. This is the extra, this is the interstitial fluid, which bathes our cell. And in that fluid, the cell recognizes that it wants that. That could be a protein, and there's no transporter for it, it's too big. So how is this cell going to acquire whatever this is in this fluid? It's going to drink it. The process is pretty much the same. The membrane is going to fold around whatever it is it wants to ingest, drink. It's going to pinch off, and now it's inside the cell, and now the cell is going to utilize whatever that is that it wants. That's pinocytosis. And once again, we need ATP in order for this to happen, or it won't. All right? Now, the last one, receptor-mediated endocytosis. I'm actually going to give you a very specific example of when this occurs. All right, so I'm gonna draw a cell. And it's gonna be a specific cell, and I want you to know what this cell is. So 
So, liver cell. All right? So we have this liver cell. And in the membrane of this particular liver cell are receptors. We already know what receptors are. We already know how they work, kind of. They have a specific shape, correct? So that they are specific for the specific molecule that they're going to bind, that they're going to grab. And so we're going to draw the receptor a specific shape, and we're going to draw the specific molecule a complementary shape. So there's our receptor. And again, there are thousands and thousands of these receptors in the membrane. I don't have time to draw thousands, so we just draw one. And then we're going to draw a molecule that it wants to grab, and we're going to give it a complementary shape. That molecule right there originally came from the blood in this LDL. What's LDL again? Can you remind me? It's cholesterol, correct? The good one or the bad one? It's the bad one. And the easy way to remember that is because L starts with lethal. So LDL, we don't want LDL to build up in our blood, right? What happens when LDL builds up in our blood? I think I told you guys. It starts to stick to arteries and forms what? You get a condition called atherosclerosis. And if enough of it builds up, you'll clog the artery. And if it's an artery that feeds the heart muscle, you have a heart attack. If it's an artery that feeds your brain, you have a stroke. So atherosclerosis is bad. And so we want to get rid of at least some of the LDL from the blood so that we keep it at a manageable level. This is how we get LDL out of the blood. That is an LDL receptor. So, your kidney, kidney, liver cells, one of their jobs, of about two dozen jobs, by the way, your liver does so many stinking things, we'll learn about most of them next semester. I heard, this is the second job I told you, right? One of them is to get LDL out of your blood. What was the first one that I told you about? That's what the liver cells do? What do they make? Start with a C. Rhymes with cholesterol. <laughs> they make cholesterol, right? So your liver cells make about, what, a gram of cholesterol? We talked about that, I think, in the first lecture. But your, your liver also removes cholesterol from the blood. So we're seeing how that's going to happen. It happens through receptor-mediated endocytosis. So what happens is, is that the cell meal makes its way out of the blood into the interstitial fluid, and now it's sitting here, and it's going to sit on top of that receptor because it's just the right shape. It's going to grab it. So now what's going to happen? Same thing that we saw before when we saw phagocytosis, except this is not phagocytosis. This is receptor-mediated endocytosis. And actually, let's just write it up here so we know exactly what this is. And again, I want you to know this specific example of removal of LDL from the blood by liver cells via receptor-mediated endocytosis. When you see the word endocytosis, once again, immediately you know that the cell is ingesting something. Either through phagocytosis, pinocytosis, or this particular process. So now what's going to happen? Well, as soon as the LDL is grabbed by that LDL receptor, the membrane's going to start to fold. Okay, just as we saw before. starting to fold around it. And eventually what's going to happen is once again, a vesicle is going to form. That used to actually, that, that, that round circle that I just drew there, the one that I had drawn earlier here, that used to be the plasma membrane. You guys see that? How the plasma membrane wraps around it, then it just pinches off, and then it breaks off in, inside the cell. That, this is the plasma membrane. That's what it once was. It's a vesicle now. Same thing here, that's the plasma membrane. And now, we have the receptor in there, along with the LDL. Okay, what is the liver gonna do with it? We'll use it. We'll use it for other stuff. But now we've removed LDL from the blood, good for us. Now, if somebody has high cholesterol level, so you, 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 you take blood from a patient and you do it.